Hi, thanks for joining me. Today I've got a fun problem all to do with cones and this problem has actually been taken from the GCHQ entrance test or at least a sample test. Uh, so GCHQ is basically uh, who you have to work for if you kind of want to be a proper spy, at least here in the UK. And if you want to go for certain roles, you have to do a maths test. And this is one of the questions from their sample test, which I think is quite interesting. So a paper company produces conical paper cups in the following way. They start with a circular piece of paper of radius R, like so, and then we take two radial cuts to remove a sector, like we've already done here, uh, and the angle there is theta. We glue together these two sides, so we take this side and we take this side and we kind of stick them together, and that's going to form a cone, like so. And obviously this cone here has a certain volume, and the goal is to well, work out the maximum volume. So R here is a fixed number and theta varies, we want to work out what value of theta maximizes the volume of this cone and what is said volume of this cone. Now you can think about this and if you see that theta is really small, imagine theta is you know 0 0.001, well then this is going to be a very very short cone, the height's not going to be that big, it'll be quite wide but it's not going to be very tall so the volume won't be that, that big. And similarly if theta is really big, let's say even you know, at, let's say just under 180 degrees, let's say 179 degrees, well it's going to be a very very tall cone but not really going to have much of a base, it's going to look a bit like that, so its volume won't be that great either. So it's going to be somewhere in the middle and the question is well whereabouts in the middle, what value of theta maximizes our volume? Okay so if you want to have a go at this problem pause the video now and give it a go for yourself and I'm going to dive straight into a solution. <laughs> Okay, so the way that we're going to work out the maximum volume of this cone is to first work out an expression for the volume of this cone in terms of r and theta. And so what we're going to do is just remember the formula for the volume of a cone. So the volume of a cone is given by the formula a pi r squared h over 3. So where r is kind of the radius of the base, the circular base, h is the perpendicular height, and uh, pi is pi. Um, okay. So we need to work out what that is in this case in terms of r and theta. And so you might wonder how on earth are we going to work this out? Well, we know that this is r and hopefully it's not too difficult to convince yourself that this length, the radius over here, is actually going to be this diagonal height over here. So r is going to be this distance there to there, like so. Okay, so we have that. And what's this angle here? Now you might ask, is this angle theta? And it probably isn't. Uh, it could be theta, perhaps for certain specific values, but in general this angle here won't be theta. Um, so let's call it something else, let's call it phi. And what we're going to do is see if we can work out an equation involving phi. And in fact what I'm going to do is call the radius of this circle x here. So what's the volume of our cone? Well, we can just substitute everything into this formula here. So the volume, which I'll call V, is just going to be pi times x squared times h, which we don't currently know, divided by 3. Well, what is h here? Well, now we can just use some trigonometry. h is just going to be r sine phi. So I'm going to put that in there. So r sine phi, like so. Cool, this is great, but we've got x's in here and phi's in here. We want them in terms of r's and thetas. So how do we work out what x and phi are in terms of r and theta? Well, the trick is to notice that well this distance here, so the circumference of the base of this cone has to be equal to this length, oops, this length here, all the way around up to there. And that's going to be the trick here. So Firstly, what's the base length, uh, the, sorry, the circumference of this circle over here? Well, it's just going to be 2 pi times the radius, so we get 2 pi x. And now what's the length of this thing here? Well, here we're assuming thetas and radians, so that angle there is 2 pi minus theta, and then arc length is just a radius times angle, and so this is just going to be r times 2 pi minus theta, like so. So now we get an equation relating uh, x and r and theta. So if I just divide both sides by theta, uh, 2 pi, sorry, 
I get that x is equal to r times 1 minus theta over 2 pi, like so. And in fact, what we're going to do, and this is actually how the question is presented on the, on the test, is we're just going to let gamma equal theta over 2 pi. Uh, so in other words, r, x is just r times 1 minus gamma. So gamma is just a scaled version of theta. Um, and basically, it's just a bit nicer to express our volume in terms of gamma. Okay, so we've got what x is in terms of gamma. Um, so this side here is r times 1 minus gamma. Now, how do we work out phi? Well, we can work out cos phi. So what's cos phi going to be? So cos phi is going to be adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is x, which is r times 1 minus gamma. And the hypotenuse is r up here. So cos phi is just 1 minus gamma. And so now we can almost get our volume in terms of uh, theta and r explicitly. We just need to work out what sine of phi is. Well, to do that, we're just going to use the identity sine squared phi plus cos squared phi equals 1. And so therefore, we'll get sine phi equals the square root of 1 minus 1 minus gamma squared, like so. So 1 minus cosine squared of phi. And if you just expand this, this is just square root 2 gamma minus gamma squared, like so. And so now we get a, an expression for our volume just by substituting everything in. So maybe I'll squeeze this over in this bottom left over here. So the volume is just pi times x squared, which is this thing here. So r squared times 1 minus gamma squared times r times sine phi, which is this all divided by 3. And if we just simplify this a little, this is a third pi r cubed 1 minus gamma squared square root of 2 gamma minus gamma squared. Again, gamma is just a scaled version of theta. Amazing. So we've worked out our volume in terms of gamma, which is essentially in terms of theta, which is a thing that's allowed to vary. Now what we're going to do is work out what the maximum value of this volume is. OK, so we've got the volume in terms of gamma, where gamma is theta over 2 pi, and we're trying to maximize our volume. So what we could do is just straight away differentiate this. Uh, and well, we'd have to decide whether we want to differentiate this with respect to gamma or theta. Turns out it doesn't actually matter, but it turns out I'm actually not going to dis differentiate with respect to either of these. Uh, just because there's a quite a nice observation here is if we let a third variable, which I'm going to call psi here, equal 1 minus gamma, we can see that the volume is just a third pi r cubed times psi squared times the square root of 1 minus psi squared. So it's not too difficult just to verify this manually by replacing gamma with 1 minus psi, uh, but you get this quite nice, neat result here. And this, this just looks a little bit cuter than what we have up here. And again, we're just going to differentiate v. Now we're going to differentiate, differentiate it with respect to psi. And you might ask, well, is this the same thing as if we were trying to maximize as theta varies? And the answer is yes, because all of these substitutions we've done with psi and gamma are linear uh, in the sense that the, it's only a scaled up slash translation of the value of theta that's going to maximize our volume. Um, because remember, all we're going to do is differentiate this and set it equal to zero. So it doesn't really matter if there's a scale constant at the front. Anyway, let's differentiate this now with respect to psi. And uh, we're just going to use the product rule here. So this third pi r cubed is a constant. So we'll keep that at the front. And now let's just differentiate this. So we get 2 psi times the square root of 1 minus psi squared. And then we're going to get plus psi squared times a half 1 minus psi squared to the negative half multiplied by negative 2 psi, like so. And now all we have to do is simplify this. So I'm going to stare at this here and see while well, the half and the two that cancels and I've got a negative sign here which means this whole term here is negative um, what else do I have well I have size in both of these terms and in fact I'm going to take out this uh, this square root 1 minus psi squared on the denominator so I get a third pi r cubed times psi times 1 over root 1 minus psi squared and what am I left with well here I've just got 2 times 1 minus psi squared and here I've just got plus, oh sorry, not plus, minus x i squared. 
uh, because this psi has come out, has come out, and I've just left with this psi squared because I factored this out as well. Cool. And now if we just simplify this, a third pi r cubed one over the square root of one minus psi squared. And then if I expand this bracket here, I get two minus three psi squared, like so. And again, remember, oh, I've, I've lost a psi outside here, which was that by there. Anyway, remember we we're trying to maximize the volume here, so we differentiated and we need to set this equal to zero. And we're looking for solutions here. So one solution is clearly when psi equals zero. But let's just think about what this means. If psi equals zero, that means gamma equals one, and that means theta equals two pi. And that kind of is a little bit nonsensical. It kind of means our, our angle is the whole circle. Uh, so if you think about theta being just slightly less than two pi, our cone would be extremely, uh, well, the base radius would be extremely small and it'd be a relatively tall cone. And so the volume would be zero. So this corresponds to a minimum. So we're not interested in that. So we're clearly only going to get uh, solutions from this guy equaling zero. So we can say that psi equals plus or minus root two over three. Uh, but it's not too difficult to convince yourself that psi has to be positive. Uh, gamma is positive and between 0 and 1 and so therefore psi is positive and in fact between 0 and 1 so we're going to ignore the negative sign and so in order to maximize the volume of this uh, cone we need psi to be equal to root 2 over 3 and well that's going to be the value of psi that maximizes our volume let's just translate that back to theta so using this substitution we get gamma is 1 minus root two over three, and so therefore theta equals two pi minus two pi root two over three. So this is the angle theta, which we need to uh, have in order to maximize the volume of our cone. And what would the volume of our cone be? Well, we can just substitute psi equals root two over three back into this expression over here. And we get the max volume is equal to one third pi r cubed times psi squared, which will be two thirds, times square root of one minus two thirds, which is going to be root three over three. And to simplify this, this will just be one third pi r cubed, or not one third, it will be two root three over 27. Let me write that here, two root three over 27 pi r cubed, like so. And that there is our final answer for the maximum that the volume can be if we're making cones in this way of cutting out a sector from our circle and gluing those two edges together. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this problem. I think this is a really interesting one and one where the solution is not super clear, at least that, that key step of getting the equation of the volume. Um, so anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this one. If you are new to the channel, please do consider subscribing. Also, do give this video a like if you've managed to stick around to the end. Hopefully that means you've enjoyed the content. Uh, thank you for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.